One stigma about the investment banking industry is that the culture is pretty bad. It's notorious for 75 plus hour work weeks as well as extremely high attrition. But it seems almost perplexing that such bad culture could permeate through an entire industry across every single firm. How is it that all these nasty people are attracted to the exact same industry? Well, today I'm going to talk about a couple of characteristics of the investment banking job that make it so difficult, and I think impact the culture itself. Now, I definitely think some of the personality tropes are true. You definitely get post MBAs with inferiority complexes. You definitely get MDs with God complexes. But honestly, I think a lot of people in the industry are relatively reasonable people, most of which can be pretty good bosses. I actually think a lot of the brutality stems from the fact that the job is a certain way. There's certain features of how the business model works and how the work itself is completed that make the culture so bad. My name is Matt Ting from Peak Frameworks, and today we're going to talk about some of the key reasons why investment banking culture is the way that it is. Okay, so the very first thing is to realize that investment banking is deal oriented. That means you're getting paid based off doing large transactions, and that means there's a high volume of deals that you need to do in order for the business to operate. Now, what's more is that in investment banking, you're working as an advisor. As an advisor, you're essentially working for a client on their deal. And whenever you're advising anyone, regardless of whatever industry you are in, you are going to have to work to their whim. Virtually every kind of transaction that investment bank deals with is of extremely high importance related to either the business engine or lifeblood of the company. You're either trying to maximize the sale price so the founders get rich, you're making an acquisition, you're raising large amounts of money. Whatever it is, there's lots of stress involved. And this all means that weekend work and even working on vacation can be extremely regular. Because even if you want to take time off, that doesn't mean the deal itself stops. That doesn't mean other people want to take that particular weekend off. For example, let's say you're working on an auction deal and you're advising a strategic acquirer and all this information gets dumped into the data room on Friday evening. Pretty much, if it's a live deal, you're gonna have to work that weekend. You're gonna need to compile all the information in the data room and get it to the client for Monday so that they can do their work during the week. So there are a lot of times on the job when speed is an important factor. Oftentimes, in the financial markets, you need to be flexible and you need to be able to execute quickly, which is why there tends to be so much weekend work. Now, the second characteristic that I would say leads to bad culture in investment banking is that most employees have relatively short tenure and that disincentivizes mentorship. Now, it is a little bit of a cyclical effect, but I think that's generally what happens and that's the mindset that a lot of senior people have. Your typical devoted analyst is gonna give you two or maybe three years of work and a lot of that, they'll do their best to be checked out. An associate term might last between two and four years, but when you compare that to other industries, it's really not a very long amount of time. So it's not always in the interest of the MD to make sure that the person is getting a good learning opportunity or to make sure that they want to stay there for the longer term. There's already this unspoken rule that these people are gonna go recruit somewhere else. And as a result, that leads you to think of them much more like resources. There's so much competition for experienced finance talent that it's extremely hard to keep people and a lot of the times that means you're not going to invest in the junior talent. Additionally, it's not just a short tenure. A lot of the people throughout the entire employee stack are also extremely busy. Your VP's first priority is probably going to be work and second is probably going to be family. So really, there's not a lot of room left for an aspiring first year analyst. I generally think that most people have too much going on in their own schedules that they're unable to sacrifice any amount of time to really nurture junior talent as well. Now, a third characteristic is that there's quite a bit of disparity in knowledge between each of the steps of the hierarchy. A senior partner is going to have way more authority, knowledge, and experience than a normal MD. An MD is gonna have much more experience than a VP, and theoretically, so on and so forth. As such, when you think about a work product, it's extremely hierarchical. Because of how particular and how specific some knowledge is in finance, to get a work product satisfactory in the eyes of the senior partner can take many iterations. So that means your job as a junior person can be extremely repetitive. You'll be doing tons of iterations based off random miscellaneous comments from each level of structure, and it's your job to make sure they all get flowed through. And then your work will also change from things like price updates whenever the stock price changes, as well as other news updates from the market. Now, a very common result of this is that MDs will sometimes pick their favorite employees and kind of promote this idea of star culture, where they'll continually work with the same VP or the same analyst, and that person will get star treatment. And I think that in itself creates resentment between different employees in the firm. 
Now, a fourth characteristic of the investment banking workflow, which I think can make it a little political, is how all these deals are based off of earning a fee. So oftentimes you can get groups or different MDs pitching for the same client or potentially pitching conflicting advice depending on what will earn their own group of fee. I've heard this is particularly common at bulge brackets, but if boundaries aren't clearly set, then sometimes groups will compete with each other and sometimes MDs will compete for the same internal resources. And as a junior person, you might find yourself having to respond to multiple groups, unsure of what comments or what you should work on. I think this is pretty common in any sales type environment, anything like outside sales or real estate, where territories kind of interfere with one another, I think you'll get this kind of intergroup politics, and I do think it does happen in investment banking. So if you were to ask me, I definitely do think that parts of the investment banking business model just make it cutthroat. I do think banks in general are becoming much more conscientious to things like diversity, equity, and inclusion, as well as respecting analyst time on the weekend. But in my opinion, it's hard to imagine these factors all getting eliminated completely. There are of course tons of great benefits like high salary and exit opportunities associated with the career, but it's not for the faint of heart. And if you are interested in breaking into investment banking, you should definitely check the course that we just launched. We've been working on it for a very long time. It's got a huge question bank, as well as detailed video tutorials, as well as Excel tools that you can use to learn the fundamentals more deeply. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.